Greetings. Welcome all the way from Maryland. We're so excited. Lifestyle Channel. Thank you guys for joining us today. I'm here to tell you that God has a special word. All those that are watching on Facebook, YouTube, everyone around the world, listen, I'm here to encourage you that today we're going to move forward. Uh, this is a series that the Lord gave me and uh, I'm excited. So let's pray before we get in the word tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, all those that are watching on Lifestyle Channel and Facebook and YouTube and all the other platforms, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, speak through me. God, I thank you, Lord, God, for direction and the lives, God. I thank you, Lord, that moving forward in every area of their life, God, whatever's holding them back, thank you, Lord, that from this day forward, something unique, something awesome is going to happen. If you believe that, shout amen. I wanted to get into this specific teaching because I believe that this is really going to bless you. You know, the Bible is clear and we can read in uh, Samuel. It's going to be kind of our, one of our texts that we go on before we go into our main text. But first Samuel chapter 15, I wanted to get in this and uh, we're going to get into seven commands to ensure obedience. But let's look at this. The Bible says, and Saul said, have not uh, the Lord also have delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as obeying the voice of God. Behold, obedience or to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken the fatness of rams. Watch what he says this. He says, for rebellion is the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness as the iniquity and idolatry. But thou hast rejected the word of the Lord and he also rejected thee from being king. And Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and the words of because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Notice he obeyed their voice, not the voice of God. Let's continue to read 25. Again, we're going out of 1 Samuel 15, and uh, we're going into 25 right now. Now, therefore, I pray, pardon my sin, and turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return to thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. And Samuel turned and went about and went away and laid his head upon his skirt of this mantle and he writ it. Now the Bible is clear right here. We can see a couple of things, but let's get into the story. We, we know that God anoints the king. He was the first king and obviously God wanted to be the king, but you know, people were just being stubborn, the children of Israel, and they wanted a king. They didn't, they didn't want God. They wanted somebody to be a mediator in a sense. Well, anyways, uh, the prophet, you know, uh, you know, God sends this man, Saul, uh, Saul lost one of his father's animals and he's looking for it. And his servant said, Hey, let's go check the prophet out. He knows where this thing's going to be. So they go and check it out. We know the story. And, um, from there, the, the prophet of God, basically it was a divine setup, And he went from chasing after animals to becoming a King, literally like overnight, God moved him forward in the call that, that he had placed for him. But you know, with Saul, Saul, uh, obviously he had, he had an issue of obedience and, uh, you know, he got to a place where everything began to be, you know, so beautiful and so right that no longer did he want to obey God. And it's almost sometimes with people, not with you watching, but people in general, when, when, when they're in the lowest degree in the life, they're, they're willing to obey God. They're willing to do anything. They're willing to give, they're willing to forgive people. But sometimes when they're being lifted up in leadership or with finances, Many times with people, it's a testing of the heart. And this is what happened. God told Samuel to tell Saul to go into the city, wipe everything out. Don't take anything. And uh, basically, the, uh, Saul did the opposite. He, he did it. And uh, this, this whole story right here is basically, he was saying, the prophet was saying to the Saul, like, you keep running into disobedience. And I don't, I don't believe, and, and this is my personal opinion, I believe that, that Saul really had a heart of disobedience. It wasn't like this was the first time. It was something that was constantly, he had like a, a heart attitude issue that, you know what, I don't need to listen to the, the prophet anymore. Look at me, I'm a king. I got money. I got servants. Look at the, look at the prophet. He doesn't really have anything. And, uh, you know, the reality is this, is that we have to be careful, so, so careful, even when God exalts us and uses us in a greater measure and in any realm of our life, that we stay humble, that we stay with an ear so we can continue moving forward. And I believe that God is going to give you grace tonight to continue to move forward. But something that I wanted to look at is that the prophet said this. He said, rebellion is the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness as the iniquity of idolatry. And then he says, it's because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, thou so also reject thee. Obviously, that's the negative side, but you see the positive side when David came in. 
David replaced Saul. You think about it. Saul should have never lost his right of being coming a king. We should be reading the, the Psalms of Saul, not the Psalms of David. And, uh, you know, because of disobedience, it held him back. But a man named David, hallelujah, he stepped in with a humble heart. Yes, David messed up and he had an, an, an affair and different things like that. But, but David had a relationship with God that even if he messed up, his, his heart was so tender to the things of God. And you see how God used him. I'm here to tell you, you might mess up and I'm not giving you a free card to mess up. But when you do, what do you do when you did it? When Saul messed up, he was basically chopping back at the prophet saying, you know, no, I did everything God told me. No, the prophet's like, no, you didn't do it. No, I did do it. It was like this almost this prideful argument when he should have just said, you know what? I messed up. I need help. And those that are watching today, wherever you might be, I'm here to tell you that there's grace, that God loves you, that God can help you. God can lift you up out of any situation you might be finding yourself in. God can extend his hand and lift you out of that pit. And I believe he will in Jesus name. If you have your Bibles tonight, I wanted to go into this, into um, uh, Deuteronomy chapter eight. And again, we're going to be going into seven commandments, seven commandments to ensure the, uh, and to ensure obedience. And uh, we're going to get into a texture scripture and uh, again, Deuteronomy 8, verses 1 all the way to 18. So if you have your Bibles today, I want you to follow with me. It says, It's all the commandments which I've commanded you this day, that you shall observe and do them, that you may live and multiply and go into the land that you may possess, that the Lord has sworn to your fathers. And you shall remember all the way that the Lord uh, led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee, to prove thee what was in your heart, whether thou would keep the commandments or not. And he humbled thee and made thee to suffer to hunger with manna which thou knowest not, neither did thy fathers know, that it might be made known that man do, does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. Then it says this, thy raiment that waxed not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell for 40 years. Thou shalt consider in thy heart, as a man chasing his son, so does the Lord chasten thee. Then verse 6 says, Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, to fear him. Uh, for the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a land flowing with brooks and water, of fountains of depths of the spring of valley. Verse 8, A land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, and a land of oil and olives and honey, a land where thou shalt eat, Without scarceness, and thou shalt not have lack in any of it. Watch this. In a land whose stones of iron uh, out of the hills that they might dig it. Verse 10. And when thou eatest and are full, thou shalt bless the Lord thy God, and which the land that he's given thee, beware thou forget. Watch this. Beware that thou don't forget the Lord thy God, and keeping his commandments and his judgments and statutes which I command thee this day, least when thou hast eaten or full, thou hast a bloody, uh, a built godly houses, and shall dwell therein. Verse 13 says this, and when thou herds and the, multi and the flocks multiply and the silver and the gold multiply, all that thou house multiply in thy heart be lifted up and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of Egypt, out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage, who led thee through the great terrible witness, wilderness, wherein the fire and serpents and, and it keeps going through the drought and all these different things where there was no water and brought thee forth from, from the flint. Then it says this. Who, who fled thee into the wilderness with manna and which thou fathers knew not and that they might humble thee and might prove thee to do good and latter end. And thou shalt say in thy heart, my power and my might and my hand has gotten me this wealth. Watch this verse 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant, which I swore unto you this day. And you can keep reading. Remember, the book of Deuteronomy is remembrance. It's the book of of remembrance. It's the book of remembrance. God was trying to remind the children of Israel, hey, don't forget where you came from. Don't forget how God got you out. Don't get caught up in the, the, the comatose state of the devil when he lies to you and you start believing his lies and you go back to thinking that, that you're doing all this and life is great because of you. But God is, was sharing with him and saying, hey guys, listen, I'm going to keep moving you forward, but don't forget what I've already done for you. And I love this story. And I say this a lot, but I want to encourage you with this. There's a story about these two frogs and uh, there's these two frogs and they're walking and hopping and, you know, they're having a fun time in the woods. And all of a sudden, both of these frogs jump and they land inside this massive well. Well, inside this well, these two frogs are looking at each other and they're trying to get out. And then all the other frog family comes and starts looking at everybody, uh, looking down at them and saying, hey, you know, you, the, the, the well is too deep. You're going to die. Just give up. Just give up. 
And uh, they were just yelling at him. And the, and the frogs, one of the frogs just laid down and kind of just gave up. And the other frog just kept hitting it, kept jumping, kept jumping. And finally, this frog jumped all the way out. And uh, the other frogs said, hey, did you not hear me? And, and the frog wrote on a piece of paper and showed the other frogs. He said, hey, I'm deaf. And then he said, I thought you were saying to get out of the hole, not stay in the hole. That's a word right there for somebody. It doesn't matter what anyone is saying. If anyone's saying to go low, to quit, to, to give up, listen, I'm here to tell you, and I want to encourage you with this, obeying and serving God is very easy. It's not hard. I promise you, God will give you grace. God will empower you. God will cause you to do things that, that no, it, it was not a hard thing. Now, notice this, even in the, even in the story with, with Jonah, Jonah was told to go to a certain city, Nineveh, but in his mind, he knew in his mind, he thought, man, it's going to be hard in Nineveh. No one's going to obey. No, no one's going to do the right thing. You know what? Forget it, God. I'm not going to obey you. I'm going to get on a boat and I'm going to sail off to another city. Well, what happened? All hell began to break loose. Why? Because he was a prophet of God. He knew better, but God spoke to him. He says, I want you to go this direction, but you're going that direction. And every time any child of God goes the wrong direction, all hell begins to break loose. But on the positive note, notice this. When you begin to do what God has told you to do, come on. When you begin to move forward in obedience, what happens? God begins to set your life up. Ah, I feel the Holy Ghost. That's what we talked about the other day. You can check us out on our YouTube channel. 21 blessings for obedience. One of the blessings that God said, if you obey my voice, he said, I'll set you high above the nations of the earth. God desires to set you up. God wants to lift your life. God wants you not to be on the bottom. God doesn't want you to be on the barrel, but God literally wants to take you up high. And I believe that God is about to take many of you up high. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. So again, we're getting into seven commandments, seven commandments tonight on obedience. This is going to be very, very crucial that you watch this and really take note. Seven commandments to ensure obedience. Now, number one, we can look at this in verse one. The first commandment to ensure obedience is is to observe all the commandments. This is key. You say observe all the commandments. Well, what does that look like? Observing means you're paying attention. You're, 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 you're really understanding. I, I look at, um, you know, at this house that we're at now, we built this big, massive playhouse. And, uh, you know, this thing was like a, it was, it was a, it was a good penny. And, uh, man, it was a massive box. There were so many different boxes and bolts and, you know, all this stuff. And, uh, obviously every, every, uh, what would you say? Every playground or any any type of thing that you buy always comes with a manual. And most men, I know the men are watching out there like me. Most of the time, you just you want to you know put it together. You don't need a manual. But this thing, I needed a manual. It was too complicated not to put the manual. So, anyways, you had I mean you had stacks of bolts and nuts and 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 pieces. I mean it looked like literally it, it was so much stuff. I mean imagine this big massive playhouse and a box, and nothing was put together. The slide wasn't put together. The swing set wasn't put together. I mean, the steps, the mountain climb wall thing. I mean, literally, I had to do this. I had to observe step by step to ensure that that playground got built. It's the same thing in life. God wants to cause your life to be like a playground. He wants to cause your life to be beautiful, but he's saying you must observe the manual that I set before you. And that's what the children of Israel did. They, 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 they brushed through the manual. As long as they were getting blessed, they were fine. But the moment that they had to obey God, many times they went back. The, the, the Bible says it's even clear. Like look in uh, Joshua chapter 3 verse 5. It says this. He says, uh, sanctify yourself for tomorrow you'll see mighty things. Well, what was that? That was a powerful statement. 440 years that they waited for this time to actually cross over, it should have never took them 440 years. It should have never took them that 40 years in the wilderness. That was not God's plan for their life, but disobedience will always delay you. Come on, listen to me. Disobedience will always delay you, but, but obedience will what? It will push you to the place that God has called you. I'm here to tell you that when you begin to hear God clearly for your life, and the things that God is telling you, I promise you, it, matter, it doesn't matter what it looks like. I promise you, God will begin to put miracles in your life. He'll start to, you'll start to move forward in your business, in your career, and whatever God has put his hand on your life, it's going to begin to move. And I believe it's going to move in Jesus' precious name. So again, we're talking again about seven commandments, seven uh, commandments to ensure obedience. So number one is observing. 
You know, I heard a man of God say this is very powerful. He said, um, when you hearken or if you observe something, he said, it's not like you're in high school and you just listen to the teacher. He said, hearkening or, or observing is literally like you in a plane about to jump out of the airplane and that guy is telling you what to do. How many know that we're going to hearken? We're going to be fully alert on what's going on. We're going to pay close attention. Why? Because our life depends on it. Your life depends on you obeying God. It's a fact. You know, there's many people that I even know who, who obeyed God. And it's like what God is doing in the life. It is like, it is outstanding. It is, it is miraculous. The power of obedience. Remember, even going back to first Samuel 15, he says, God doesn't, God doesn't, you know, just excited so much about what you can do. Your sacrifices. He wants obedience. Obedience is what it's better than sacrifice. So some people can say, man, I'm going on a 40 day fast. You know, I'm going to give all this money to the poor or whatever. And that's great. You can do those things. But maybe God is just saying, hey, go forgive that person. Hey, tell that guy that you love him. Hey, let that thing go. Why? Because again, obedience, obedience is not always in the big things. God can tell us just these small things and people's minds can think, oh, I got to do this big thing. A lot of times it's just little things that God tests you on. But when you pass the test, hallelujah, the promotion comes in God. And I believe that this year something is going to happen to you. Come on. Something unique, something God is about to move you forward and you're about to do great and mighty things. Come on. One more time. If you believe that shout hallelujah. Again, seven commandments. We're talking about that tonight. Seven commandments to ensure obedience. And uh, number one was to observe all the commandments. To observe all the commandments. That's why you need to observe. You need to have a Bible. If you don't have a Bible, how can you observe? If that manual would have flew off in the wind, how could I have built that playhouse? There was no way I could have built it. I had to grab a hold of that manual. I had to pay attention and I had to go step by step to see that thing evolve. And that's exactly what we need to do. And that's what God was saying. So number one, observing all the commandments. And that was in verse one. Number two, it says this, remember all the way that the Lord led you these 40 years out of the wilderness. So notice that number two, remember all the way, remember all the things that the Lord has done to you. I've been hitting this every Sunday in church is that you cannot forget your past victories. You can't go back and say, you, you know, you're coming up to a challenge and you already forgot what, what God has already done. Guys, listen to me today. God has delivered many of you from drugs and alcohol and that crazy marriage, that, that, that cancer, whatever it might have been. If he did it before, come on, he will do it again. Do not forget the problem with the children of Israel that kept forgetting what God has already done. I mean, they, they saw the 10 plagues of God. They saw the frogs coming out. They saw the lightning bolts hitting. They saw the firstborn dying. They saw the blood, the water turning to blood. They done, they forgot what God has already done. I'm here to tell you that don't forget what he's already done. You say, well, I just got saved or I'm just new to this. Well, what did he already do? Even when you weren't even saved, what did he do? You should have been in that car wreck, right? You could, you could have got, you could have got alcohol poison that one night. Something you, you, there's so much that, that plane could have came crashing down, but God kept you. Why? Because he's good. Don't forget. Come on. You could have been aborted as a kid. Your, your parents could have gave up on you. You know, you're, I mean, there's so many little minute things that if God didn't step in our life, that's what God was saying. If you want to obey, don't forget, don't forget what I've already done. Don't forget because as you keep on obey an uh, obedience, there's always a there's always a prize, to, there's always a reward to obedience. God loves to reward his children, and that's key. So don't forget, remember all that the Lord, number two, remember all that the Lord has done already. He's already done great things. God has done so many miraculous things, and that's what, the, well, that's what happened to the children of Israel. They forgot. Number three, let's look at seven commandments. Seven commandments we're looking at, and our text right now we're going into is, uh, we're in Deuteronomy 8, powerful text. And again, we're going into eight, uh, seven commandments, I'm sorry, to ensure obedience. Some things that you have to ensure. So number one is observe all the commandments of God. Observe what God's telling you in his word. Number two is remember all the ways that God uh, obviously led you out. And he was talking about the 40 years pertaining to that. That's in verse two. Number three, the third thing is consider in your heart the chastening of the Lord. Now watch this. Let me get on this. When God is correcting you, consider it in your heart. Notice it's not to harm you. It's to help you. Notice this. A lot of people in life, and even me, many times when I was corrected by anybody, by authority, 
I wanted to run. I didn't want to be corrected, but God is correcting us many times to make us go further. It's like the military or it's like, you know, I think about it even like this. If you ever went to uh, go to work out and you had a, a, a trainer, people pay for a guy to correct them. That's what they do. You know, but sometimes people can go to church and, oh, that pastor corrected me and, uh, you know, I ain't, I ain't doing church anymore. But yet people will pay thousands of dollars to go and, and get trained and have a guy chew them out. Hey, come on, pick up the weights. Come on, sissy. You're pushing it the wrong way. And they'll, they'll allow that to happen. But when it comes to the things of God, it's like the devil tries to hit that. Notice it. When you get corrected, notice that God loves you and he's trying to perfect you. Come on, listen to me. God wants to perfect you. When he, when he tells you to, hey, don't do that, it's for your good. Don't run away from the God's correction because God's correction will make you turn into another person. It'll make you turn into a better person. You know, and that's the key. It's always crucial when God speaks to you, when he tells you to adjust things and, and, and maybe you feel grieved in your spirit. It's not a bad thing. It's actually a great thing. It's God training. you. It's him chasing in you. It's him knocking the old you out. And I could tell you story after story. I remember times where, you know, I said things I shouldn't have said. And I was up in the office and, the, and you know, the pastors were letting it rip and I needed it. I needed to be corrected. But out of that, I made the adjustments. I didn't run from correction. You, you notice the Bible says in Proverbs, you know, if you rebuke a foolish man, you'll receive scorning. That means you'll get beat up. But he says, if you rebuke or reprove a wise man, he'll become wiser. So my question to you, those that are watching tonight and today, when, when God comes to correct you, and do you run away or do you run forward and keep making the adjustments? That's what the children of Israel this is what God was saying. Hey, listen, when you get corrected, you need to consider all the times that God was telling you to make the adjustments. He was telling you not to do this because there's a reason behind you not doing this. It's like my kids. If you really love your kids, you're going to correct them. You know, think about it like a kid walking across the road and you snatch the kid by the hand and you say, hey, don't ever do that to the kid's mind. Hey, daddy's being a jerk. But no, in your heart, you're saying, I just saved your life. So you have to see how God sees it's not him yanking you and all that, but it's him saying, hey, don't go down that path because that path will lead to a, a collision. That path will lead into something else. So you have to understand when God corrects you, immediately make the adjustments because all he wants you to do is move forward. Come on. And I see you moving forward in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody shout move forward. Again, that's on number three. Consider in your heart the chastening of God. So consider it. When God corrects you, consider it within your heart. Number four, we're talking about seven commandments to ensure obedience. Number four, it says this, keep the commandments to walk in his ways and to fear him. Now notice this, the Bible is clear, is that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now the fear is not saying, oh God, I'm afraid of you and you're going to hurt me. No, it's a reverential, uh, a, rev a resurrection or um, you could say a respect. You have this respect, this awe, this this, this, I don't cross the line with God. It's just like my dad. I love my dad. My dad loves me, but they're, they're, I know not to cross the line with pops. Pops does not play. He, 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 he you don't want to get on his bad side. It's the same thing with God. You have this, re, re, uh, what is the word I'm trying to use? Uh, you have this, this fear in a good way, but a respecting fear and an awe that, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm not afraid, but I fear you. I have a respectful uh, approach to you. I don't treat you as garbage. I don't treat you as dung, but I know, okay, you know what? I'm going to have to obey you and I'm going to have to fear knowing that all my decisions that I make and everything that I do will cause consequences. So again, this is what he said in verse uh, six. He said to walk in his ways and to fear him. So that, that respectful fear that you have for God. Number five says this, it says in, in verse 10, this is the fifth uh, commandment. It says, that you would bless the Lord for all the good land that he's given you. My God, I want to hit on this tonight. What has God already given you? Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. I mean, you, you can praise God just the house that you're living in. You say, well, I'm living in an apartment. Rah, rah, rah. Yeah, but you could be under a bridge right now. Oh man, life sucks. But yet you got a phone or you got a TV that you're watching from us today. You need to begin to bless God for what you already have. So many times, so many other people, they always want to go, um, they want to always, they're always wanting something, but they don't realize what they already have. Think about it. You're not stuck in a hospital right now. You're not, you're not connected. You're not on drugs anymore. And if you are, God can break that power. You, you need to bless God. That's the, that's the key. So many people, 
you know, they're, they're praying for things, but God is saying, bless me for the things that I've already given you. Thank you. You know, I remember this, you know, this is so powerful. You know, this is a story I heard from a great minister and he said, um, you know, the only thing that God cannot do is basically thank himself. <laughs> think about that. Imagine you saying thank you to yourself. I can say to myself, thank you, Tony. That just sounds weird. God, listen, God created us to thank him. Watch this. And uh, if you ever given something to anybody and they have never said thank you, in your heart, you're almost saying, man, that guy's ungrateful and I don't want to give anything back to him. And how do you think God feels? But um, notice the other thing. Imagine you give some guy, you know, like five bucks. And he's like, oh my God, man, thank you so much. Man, that's such a blessing. Wow, you didn't have to do that. And you're like, wow, that's pretty cool. I'm about to give him some more money or give him something else. Why? Because that explosive thankfulness, there's something about a thankful and grateful heart. It attracts God to what? To begin to move. And I believe even this week, as you begin to worship God, as you re if you remind yourself all the things that God has already done, the things that he's blessed you with, come on, that marriage that you're in, you could still be single right now. You, you, could, you, could, you could be dead right now. You could still be on drugs. What has God already done in your life? And uh, I want to encourage you with that. We, we're, we can continue going on, on, um, on Facebook, but Lifestyle Channel, we got to start wrapping this up. Um, but all those that are watching on Lifestyle Channel, you can check out River Church Baltimore. You can connect. Uh, we're, we're starting a church. We've already started in, in the Maryland area. You can check us out. You can go on the website and see more. And then also, you can finish this teaching uh, today, and you can go to Tony M. Carpenter on our YouTube page, and you can subscribe, and you can follow us with seven commandments and sure obedience. The series that we're going on is move forward. And all those that are watching today, I want to ask you this question. What would happen if you died today? Where would you spend eternity? There's a heaven again, a hell to shun. And uh, just like 2,000 years ago, the, the, the price was paid, the cross, the blood was shed, and you don't have to go to a devil's hell. Why? Because Jesus has come to set you free, and he loves you tonight. Number two, you're watching on Lifestyle Channel. You have never accepted uh, you, you maybe accepted Jesus, but you're backslidden. You're not living for him. There's something that came in your life, uh, a crazy, you know, Mack truck from hell. Something happened and you want to give your life to the Lord. It's time to give your life to the Lord. And I just want you to say a simple prayer to say, dear Lord Jesus, uh, come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sins. Wash me and cleanse me and set me free. Again, all those that are watching on Lifestyle Channel, you can tune in. You can go over to our YouTube page and you can watch the rest of the series Listen, we love you guys so much. And again, uh, God has something unique and special for you. And uh, I really believe that this year is going to be a year of you moving forward, you taking dominion. And remember, obedience is better than sacrifice. So get into a good church, get a Bible and start moving forward. God loves you. He's with you. And uh, it's only the beginning. It's only the beginning of what God wants to do. Again, all those that are watching, thank you guys so much for watching. You can click over to our YouTube channel. We love you. God bless you.